My name is Graham, and you'll never believe it, I graduated from baking class! <laughs> it was an intense two and a half week course, but I made it to the end. And to celebrate, I made a cake! Okay, I know it may not look like much now, but when I add the frosting, it's going to look amazing. Of course I'm not gonna frost it yet because the cake is still warm. That's something I learned in class. If you try and frost a cake while it's still warm, everything falls apart. So, you gotta let it, you know, chill. Oh, hey! While we wait, let's talk about patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. So, let's wait. Still warm. Yeah, waiting is boring. I know something that might help. Let's set a timer. Uh, I figure it'll take half an hour for the cake to cool, so. Yeah. Okay, how much time has passed? 30 seconds? Oh! oh. Waiting is so hard. I just want to finish this cake so I can celebrate. Today's story has a big celebration in it. And the people celebrating have been waiting for a long time. You should check it out. I'll count the seconds. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. 
Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. For hundreds of years, God's people had been waiting on a savior for rescue. Every year at Passover, they celebrated how God had freed them from slavery in Egypt, and they looked forward to how one day, God would rescue them again. Lord, save us! The city of Jerusalem was filled to overflowing for Passover, and news of anything unusual spread quick as flame. They say Jesus is coming into the city. That teacher fella? He made somebody alive again, even though they were dead. Lazarus? Well, if you believe that sort of thing. My cousin Sarah saw it with her own eyes. Excitement and tensions ran high in the city, and as the people prepared to celebrate, the religious leaders hatched their own plans. This Jesus is trouble. He says too much. He does too much. Then we'll have to do something about that, won't we? A short distance away near the town of Bethany, Jesus was indeed preparing to make his way to Jerusalem. He called two of his disciples, maybe Peter and John. Go into the village. As soon as you get there, you will find a donkey tied up. Her colt will be with her. Untie them and bring them to me. Consider it done. But wait, we can't just take someone's donkey. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. The owner will send them right away. Oh, uh, okay, good. The two disciples hurried into the village. Jesus didn't say where to look, so, uh, oh. Steady there. The two disciples quickly untied the donkey and her colt. Hey! Uh, hello? What, what are you doing? Why are you untying my donkeys? Uh, it's like this. The Lord needs them. Oh! Okay, then. The disciples led the colt and its mother back to Jesus. They even draped their coats on the backs of the donkeys. There. Nice and comfy. Sort of. So Jesus climbed onto the back of the colt, and his friends followed close behind as they started on their way down the dusty road towards the city. Though his friends didn't realize it till later, Jesus was fulfilling the words of the prophet Zechariah from hundreds of years before. Say to the city of Zion, see your king comes to you. He is gentle and riding on a donkey. The road was crowded with travelers making their way to Jerusalem. Other people spilled out of the city when they heard that Jesus was on the way. Praise God! Have you heard what this man has done? People actually began to take off their coats and throw them on the road before Jesus. They tore palm branches from the trees and waved them on high. Hosanna! Some of the religious leaders had joined the crowd to discover what was going on. This whole thing is preposterous. Out of control. So tell him to stop. Who, oh, me? Hosanna! 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name Blessed of the Lord. Who comes in the name of the Lord. Teacher. Teacher. As the donkey carried him slowly forward, Jesus turned to look at the religious leaders. They glared back. Teacher, tell your followers to stop this instant. Jesus took in the joyful crowds. He looked ahead at the walled city of Jerusalem, sprouting up from the rocky hillsides. Then he looked back at the religious leaders. I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As Jesus rode on, the religious leaders fell back, grumbling to each other. This isn't getting us anywhere. Look how the whole world is following him. So even though these religious leaders had studied and waited their whole lives for a savior, they didn't recognize Jesus when he came. But still, the people continued to cheer and to follow Jesus into the city. Listen up, here's the truth. Waiting is boring and it's so hard and it can take a long time. It can even feel like time slows down when you're waiting. But listen, just because we're so focused on what we're waiting for doesn't mean that God isn't up to something. So I say we change our focus. Instead of thinking about how long things are taking to go the way we want, let's focus on the creator of the universe. Let's focus on how he has a plan. Let's focus on how the savior that the Israelites waited hundreds of years for has already come for us. And his name is Jesus. 
we should focus on those things. Everything else is just icing on the cake. Waiting can take a long time. It's true, but it doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be boring. We've got a lot to celebrate while we wait. That's the one thing to remember today. You can celebrate even when you're waiting. Who knows? Maybe waiting can be fun. Oh, the cake is ready for some frosting. Oh, I can't wait to taste this. I don't have to. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Happy Palm Sunday, everybody.